children, so we are going to discuss the paper, what you have already done. In that paper, when you take question number one, question number one, it says, like, for you to write the electronic configuration for the atom, atomic number 43, when you come to atomic, atomic number writing electronic configurations, 43, you know, it is after zinc, so you write the electronic configuration for zinc easily then from there you can see 4s2 is already filled right and then 3d10 4s2 then it is going to be coming new electrons 4p6 5s2 and 4p4d5 so in this question asking the element having the atomic number 43 the last energy level uh, the number of electrons in the last energy level so 3d is not the last energy level electron gets filled into 3d the, the last electrons get filled into 3d but last energy level is going to be 5s2 so then therefore two electrons are going to be in the last energy level two electrons uh, question number two actually it is half-life question uh, in that one half-life for this carbon sample to come down uh, first it's taking it says 5800 years so 14 milligram sample to come down to the mass is given 0 0.0625 uh, uh, millimoles so it is it is going to be then you can convert into milligrams and come to come down to you know millimoles you multiply it by the molar mass and then you can get to the mass and then from from 14 milligram uh, it is first uh, half life will be taken for come down to half of its mass and then like that four lifetime it's going to take to come down to the mass of uh, mass of uh, 0 0.875 milligram question number two half life is 5800 come down to 414 milligrams to come down to millimoles 0 0.0625 it's going to take a certain number of half lives first you have to get 14 milligram how many milligrams going to be in uh, this many millimoles when you multiply it with the molar mass you get the mass of that and then you come down with the lifetime first half life 7 milligram and then come down four after four half lives only it is going to come down to 0 0.0875 milligram so four half life mean 5800 into four then you get the answer now uh, second answer is your answer 2000 uh, 20, uh, 23,200 yes it's going to take uh, then third third question that is uh, not so difficult because uh, the, it is k 4 when you add it into a neutral medium you know k 4 when you use it is in acidic medium it's going to emit 2 plus in a basic medium or neutral medium if you leave it it's going to go into that brown color precipitate MnO2 so when you add in KMnO4 it's reduced to MnO2 so MnO2 is given as the answer fourth fourth is your answer next question the number of optical active isomers present in the molecular structure molecular structure is given when you are going to come to optical active that means chiral carbon has to be there the chiral carbon is going to come with all four different groups four different groups should be attached to the carbon so to get four different groups attached to the carbon you can you can get the structures when you draw the structures i have given you structures the possible structures to get a chiral carbon coming these are the, the structures you get to get the chiral carbon. So with that optical active isomers will be given by four structures only. So then the answer is going to be the, the third answer four. So right because you can get chiral carbon coming with NH2 group attached and sometimes 
the amine could be primary amine with CH3 groups attached also, so then you have to get different structures. Uh, think about it and get the get the the all possible structures to get a chiral carbon. Uh, so then that answer is going to be three. Next question is uh, is the volume of gases produced at room temperature by thermal decomposition of ammonium nitrate but in 1 gram of ammonium nitrate is used but 80% is only going to be ammonium nitrate so then therefore you have to get from 1 gram 80% you have to calculate the 80% the mass of ammonium nitrate only going to be in the compound and then from that you know you have to always try the the balance equation for chemical reactions you have to write when you are thermally decomposing ammonium nitrate when you heat it's going to give water and N2O and when you heat uh, that gives the molar ratio one mole is going to give when you get the balance equation always when once you get the balance equation only you can talk about how many moles going to be reacting and how many moles of products going to be coming so then here they are asking the mass of uh, the volume oh sorry volume of the gas volume going to be coming at room temperature water is uh, not a gas even though you heat it at room temperature therefore only gas will be into O so number of moles of ammonium nitrate you can calculate get 1 gram 80% Divide by the molar mass, you get the number of moles of ammonium nitrate. Go back to the equation. From the equation, you know one mole give one mole of N2O. Then number of moles of N2O also number of moles of ammonium nitrate. Then you know volume for one mole of any gas is 22.4 22 at STP. This is at room temperature, therefore 24 cubic decimeters. So this is uh, this is one mole for 0 0.01 mole. So you can calculate the the volume of gas going to come. That is 0 0.24. That's going to be the fourth answer. So then when you move on to the sixth question, sixth one, sixth one is uh, is talking about. Uh, sulfuric acid is added to potassium iodide than potassium bromide when potassium iodide is there potassium iodide is sulfuric acid is is uh, going to uh, very easily sulfur dioxide can be produced if there is someone to oxidize so i minus is sulfuric is going to reduce to sulfur dioxide i minus is going to i2 and since HBr uh, potassium bromide is there. HBr also can can be produced as a gas in the medium. These are the possible gases can come out from the answers given. Bromine is not heavily produced because I minus is there. But if I minus is not there, bromine also can be given. But answers given not for bromine, sulfur dioxide, HBr, and iodine. So those all uh, all three gases are possible. The possible gases are going to be those three. So the answer is uh, for that one. Answer is number one. First answer. So next question. The ascending order of electronegativity of carbon uh, atom uh, changes in the following compound. Ascending order of electronegativity. So you know electronegativity is when when you when you come to electronegativity, children, you have to think of electronegativity is actually not just pulling power. Electronegativity is bonded electron pulling towards the ability to pull towards the atom. So electronegativity is going to increase with the oxidation number. That means oxidation power. Sorry, oxidation state. And the other one is. Um, is their, their hybridization also if their hybridization is going to be sp hybridized 
then bond length and bond is going to be a short bond length short bond you all have done hybridization when the bond is short also pulling power is more more s character is there pulling power is more so you have to consider both when you are looking at the electronegativity of an atom so when when attach other atoms when you consider for carbon dioxide you can see two oxygens so they both oxygens pull electrons away from the carbon so carbon is going to have plus 4 oxidation state oxidation number so then therefore carbon carbon is going to be electronegativity of carbon is going to be very high for carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide uh, uh, both the uh, oxygens are pulling out when you come to HCN, nitrogen is going to make carbon plus 3 but on the other side hydrogen is going to make carbon minus 1 so then therefore oxidation, oxidation number is going to be plus 2 on that carbon. Then other carbon also it is going to be you can see it's uh, plus 3 from CWO and OH from minus 1 then it's going to be plus 2 from that, that the other carbon is coming from uh, HCWOH right HCWOH I'm talking HCWOH also going to make carbon plus 2 oxidation state and HCN is also going to make carbon plus 2 oxidation state but hybridization now both are plus 2 oxidation state when you look at the hybridization you can see uh, SP hybridized is HCN other one is SP2 when you have more p character when you when you're going to have p character more coming into the hybridization then bond length is going to be longer bond length long mean pulling power is less so then therefore more electronegativity with the sp hybridized hybridization uh, with hcn so carbon dioxide is the most then hcn then it's going to be HCWH, then it's going to be HCOH, that means uh, the aldehyde, form aldehyde. So H is going to be the least uh, electronegative, ne electronegative one, neg negativity, because it's going to be having both sides HH, CWO group, carbonyl group makes uh, plus two, but HH is going to be removing the plus 2 because it's become minus 2 so then therefore its oxidation state is also it's going to become 0 so therefore it's the least pulling power least electronegative one next question when you come into come on to the eighth question number a you know you have to it's a normal nomenclature question carbon chain you have to find the longest carbon chain and get the most active principal group you have to find out start from the principal carbon having the functional group principal functional group and then here you can see CWH is there that's the most powerful one principal carbon group is and uh, CWH acid group is there so and here you have a carbonyl group aldehyde group is also there but next to the acid group principally is going to be the acid group as the functional group then you start uh, numbering number one that carbon Car one two three four five you can see how numbering is done to get the longest carbon chain including the double bond into the carbon chain then like normal first you get, uh, first you are going to when you are writing you can see four four mile four mile is going to be C CHO group is attached to the fourth carbon according to the alphabetical order formyl comes before methyl so then therefore first you write for formyl for methyl 5 hexanoic acid so next one question number nine uh, it is buffer action it's a buffer when you are talking about a buffer you know you have to buffering means uh, the acid when you add an acid or when you add a base it's just going to uh, not going to show acidic or basic nature in that solution you buffer it so it is to buffer you can use uh, you can use a weak acid and uh, and its salt 
right or big base or with in salt and high concentrations if you have a higher concentration then you have more molecule to uh, to fight with the molecule which is acid or a base coming there so then buff action is going to be more with the with depending on depending on the acid whether it's a concentration is also going to have an impact so first answer is not going to be a buffer because it is going not going to be a weak one so then therefore equilibrium will not be there sodium hydroxide 0 0.1 uh, 1 in sodium hydroxide and CH3COOMA sodium acetate is going to be there but there is no uh, equilibrium is not going to be with the acetate so then therefore that's not buffer uh, number two when you come acetic acid and sodium acetate that's a buffer system but 0 0.5 acetic acid and 0 0.1 sodium acetate so 0 0.5 acetic acid will be there a large amount but acetate ion is going to be less then buffering action is going to be better in when you take the fourth answer ammonium hydroxide because 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 ammonium chloride so buffer action is going to be better in that one so your answer is going to be question number uh, uh, question number nine answer is four uh, buffer action you'll all understand how the buffering action is going to happen right so then when you when you look at this with the concentration and being ammonium hydroxide is there to take care of acid because when ammonium hydroxide when you write the equation ammonium ammonium hydroxide then ammonium hydroxide is there to plenty of ammonium hydroxide is there to buffer this right and at the same time when you have an ammonium chloride is there in the solution ammonium ions are there then when you add OH minus ions also coming into the solution that also can take take then this can take care of that then it's going to produce ammonia and water there won't be basic here it is going to produce ammonium chloride and water so there is no acid and base basic and acidic acidity and basicity what you're adding into the solution is going to be uh, it's going, going to be nullified by the weak base and ammonium ions in the solution and if you have a high concentration of them then they can take care of a large number of acid and base coming into the solution also so then therefore it is going to be a good buffer. Oxidation number and the valency number of nitrogen atom in this molecule. So when you come to the molecule in the nitrogen, oxidation and, and uh, valency, oxidation is going to come. I am going to I'm going to talk to you on, on your on your screen the answer. Look at the answer. Nitrogen is connected to oxygen that is going to make uh, nitrogen plus because oxygen is very electronegative pull the electron towards the towards the oxygen so nitrogen gets plus one and nitrogen since it is a dative you know when you do uh, when you when you get the oxidation state coming the formal charge is going to be coming on plus one charge is going to come on nitrogen so that plus one and oxygen giving plus one oxidation state is there nitrogen and carbon carbon is going to be less electronegative nitrogen more than minus three because pulls the electron towards nitrogen minus three charge and plus two charge is there on uh, on ni nitrogen when you get the balance then balance one minus is going to come nitrogen is uh, nitrogen formal charge is here uh, plus one formal charge four bonds and uh, oxygen is making one bond and pulling the electrons towards it therefore one more plus is going to come onto nitrogen from carbon side nitrogen is getting minus three then the balance charge is minus one so oxidation number is going to be minus one and 
nitrogen has given all five electrons because formal charge plus one comes with one two three four five all five electrons are given so then all five electrons are bonded then valence a or valence number is five so answer is going to be number one answer next question when you come to question number 11 the wavelength of uh, the light one absorption spectrum so they are asking the, the amount of energy so you know photon energy when you take photon energy that is one photon right energy you use e equals h mu to calculate one photon energy so you use e equals h mu since it is given with the lambda so you come to e equals h c over lambda equation and then when you substitute the values you can find the energy but that energy for one photon but they are given in kilojoules that uh, total energy then you have to multiply with the with, with the Avogadro number and get the energy amount of energy involved there then it's going to be 271 kilojoules because it's not a photon energy one mole of photon energy the next one, electron gain enthalpy of uh, the largest endothermic value is, you know, electron gain enthalpy when you take a gain, electron gain can be exothermic or endothermic. They can be taking electron happily or very difficult to take the electron. There are situations. So when they are already having eight electrons, they don't want to take another electron to them to the atoms to themselves so then therefore they are reluctantly they have to be pushed to take the electrons when you look at the answers you can see some of them their electrons actually are, are taken not willingly especially when you come to be bromine minus br minus since br minus is uh, br minus is already having eight electrons outmost it's not going to take so then therefore it is the exercise is not going to be exothermic it is going to be endothermic you can see nitrogen also because half stable configuration that's also not willingly taking because you know half stability therefore it is it can be endothermic but not as bad as bromine minus because it's already eight and oxygen minus also second electron taking taken into the atom is going to be endothermic why Oxygen is craving for one more electron, but oxygen already has one minus. Minus charge means second electron coming is going to be having a repulsion. So then therefore that's also going to be endothermic, but not as bad as Br minus. Br minus is already outermost is completed. It's normal configuration. So then therefore that's going to be the most endothermic reaction. So when you come to the increasing order next question, next question is uh, is increasing order of uh, acidity uh, acidic strength acidity so then you have you are given different acids like uh, phenol benzoic acid acetic acid and formic acid and when you have these acids what you need to understand how do you find the the most strongest or strongest acid acidity is going to depend on how fast and how easily H plus can be removed from the molecule or a, or a molecule especially because these are these are organic acids from this uh, from this molecule H plus can be removed easily if oxygen is most um, go, going to be very electronegative then H plus is going to be given out easily oxygen becomes more electronegative connected to hydrogen oxygen going to be very electronegative if carbon is going to be pulling the electrons towards the carbon atom so carbon is going to have a stronger pull towards the carbon atom when carbon becomes more and more uh, the stability is going to be uh, the pulling power is going to be coming onto the carbon atom so you can see uh, the hydrogen mo most acidic one is going to be the the connect connected with uh, the formic acid why because carbon is now look at this carbon 
oxygen OH you are not going to compare why because oxygen is for common to everyone you can see oxygen OH hydrogen is going to be released oxygen gets more electronegative oxygen becomes more electronegative depending on the partner connected to that that is going to be which is going to be carbon atom so carbon is connected to hydrogen that's not supporting so then carbonyl carbon is going not going to get support from hydrogen much of electrons because no induction induction is also very little and no resonance at all so induction is very little for formic acid so then therefore formic acid is going to be the strongest acid so when you move on to other acids you can see phenol is going to be not not having a carbonyl missing a carbonyl c double o group connected there that's going to be the weakest acid because carbonyl pool will not be there but when you look at the carbonyl pool with the other three one is going to be very supportive of the the carbonyl group because that's going to be you know uh, through resonance also it is going to give electrons towards the carbonyl group it is since since that one is going to be uh, be ha having the giving and taking both is going to be there resonance is going to be uh, reson when you get the resonance effect it's going to be uh, circulating the carbon plus charge around the ring so it's going to be coming time to time so uh, the, when you have methyl group attached to it CH3 group attached to it it is through induction it is going to be su supply uh, electrons toward the carbonyl carbon so when you compare A and C you can see A is going to be redu reducing less lesser of the carbon uh, plus charge less than the benzene ring benzene ring is going to be sharing the plus charge and and uh, reducing even much more on the carbonyl carbon plus charge so then carbon plus charge highest is going to be uh, formic acid so then therefore d is the highest and the strongest acid then next one is going to be c because only induction is supporting right then d, uh, a is going to be the next one because it's the through resonance it is supportive and so resonance and induction both going to work there so th because of that it's going to be the next one and the carbonyl carbon missing so then therefore electron pull from the carbon will not be there for oxygen here so therefore that is going to be the weakest acid when you take acids these all are organic acidic molecules. Phenol is going to show least acidic strength because you can see carbonyl carbons are connected to all these acids but the difference is acidic strength going to depend on how, how uh, much and how fast and easily H plus can be released but that's going to depend on carbonyl carbon strength as well because carbonyl carbon if it's going to pull electrons from oxygen strongly it is going to make the oxygen more electronegative if electron oxygen is going to be very electronegative then it's going to pull the electrons from hydrogen and H plus is going to be coming into the solution very fast and easily so that's going to happen depending on the strength of the strength of this C double O group so C double groups are going to be attached everywhere into all three molecules but you can see here this is going to be different these are going to be different so depending on these ones differences then it is going to have a different impact coming on to the carbonyl carbon also so here no support given to this therefore this is going to be very very strong plus charge then strong plus is going to make this one very acidic then this is the strongest acidic one then when you compare these two this is going to have a resonance impact coming and this is going to just give the give CH3 group is going to give through induction the support since this is induction and the resonance impact both are going to be sharing the electrons 
this is going to be the, the most acidic that is if we say a b c uh, this we will number it one two three four if you get it this is going to be the strongest acidic one then the, this is going to be the least acidic one out of these two this is going to be stronger compared to this one because this is only through induction is going to support here this the support is going to be given sharing the plus charge this is going to be this is going to be uh, the strongest acid then this then this and this is the least acidic so this is going to be stronger acid compared to this one this acid because of the resonance effect and the induction whole statement regarding the size of the anion the size of the ions from s and b block elements size of the cations always smaller than the anions yes cations you know remove uh, energy level so then therefore it's going to be smaller that the anions they take an electrons into this and due to electron repulsion they expand out so then therefore they are bigger anions are bigger than cations one the way they are forming due to the, the way they form their ions then uh, second answer anions are always larger than their neutral atoms anions are usually you know neutral atom is going to be having certain number of electrons and I mean taking an outside electron into the atom then electron repulsion is going to get bigger and larger so then therefore the size of the size of the the atom the energy level is going to expand out and size is going to be increasing so anions are going to be larger usually larger than the atom atom is going to be having certain number excess electrons makes it more repulsion on the, this energy level and expand out therefore it's going to be larger third one size of the cations increase from left to right you look at the cations you know you can, you can say take like you know sodium magnesium aluminium uh, across when they are forming cations you know sodium is only one plus magnesium is same number of energy levels two two energy levels right the nucleus and then that is going to be 2 plus therefore shrinking further then aluminium is going to be 3 plus so then therefore it's getting even smaller so you can see it is yes it is decreasing but it's decreasing from left to right not right to left so then it is uh, it is from right to left it is is, is uh, uh, size of the cations increase uh, size of the cations increase so it is size of the cations increase from uh, from right to left yes that's also a true statement why because from right right to left it is increasing size of the cation is increasing next one the size of the cations formed by uh, elements uh, determined by the, the charge of the anions uh, and the position of the period, yes, position of the period and charge of the anion, whether it is going to be plus 2 or plus 3 charge or whether it is going to be minus 2 or minus 3 charge and the position where they, where they are placed is going to determine the size of the cation and anion. Here it is talking about the cations. Yes, that is also a true statement. The size of the anions increase from left to right across the period size of the anion you know anion is going to be if you take nitrogen oxygen flow rate so same number of energy levels going to be there but you can see when they are going to take the electrons this is going to take three electrons be more repulsion then size is going to be bigger this one only take two electrons to energy level then size is smaller than this then this is going to be even smaller so then therefore f minus is going to be the smallest so when you are going from here left to right it is not going to increase it is decreasing so then therefore fifth answer is is not the false answer it's not the correct answer 
your molecule is into O5, there is no charge on the molecule. So when you get this structure, you call the basic structure. Since you don't have a molecule with, with uh, coming with no charge, formal charge structures once you do, you should not be getting any charge coming. So now shall we look at this molecule. Uh, first one, oxygen is going to be having six electrons, it's going to come with six and that's going to be all our terminals. Terminals always will be getting outermost eight electrons, out always outermost eight going to be completing for terminals. So six, seven, eight double bond is going to come. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then nitrogen is now already got, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So then therefore no more bonds going to come here. Then this is going to be a terminal oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then terminal oxygen has seven electrons from the Lewis and it's got only six electrons, so then therefore one minus. Then when you come to nitrogen, you can see one, two, three, four, five brought. Now it is going to have only four electrons given by Lewis. 1 plus then oxygen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 because it's going to have its octet complete. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, nitrogen can have a double bond to go to 8. Then when you complete octet for oxygen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So then there is uh, no more formal charge coming here. Then this oxygen again a terminal, so then therefore 8 electrons should be there. Then the minus charge you can see because one extra electron has come. Nitrogen 1, 2, 3, 4, therefore plus 1 charge. So for this one molecule, now no charge, no charge on the molecule also. So like that, you can write many structures by changing the position of this, this double one. You're, when you are doing formal charge structures, you have need to remember uh, don't do formal, the normal formal charge structures when you're giving resonance structures. Resonance structures when you do, you have a two double bonds coming. So then share the double bond between without changing the structure. So to say without changing the structure when you're sharing the double bond, not only double bonds going to come onto this and come onto that and you are writing structures. You can even write a structure uh, you can even write a structure, double bond can come, which come to this oxygen, can come to this oxygen, this oxygen, and one double bond you keep here, then two double bonds, right? Then you do the structure again, terminal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven brought, seven can come with the Lewis, brought six only, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now form a charge is minus 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. Lost 1 electron on nitrogen. 5 was there. Now in the, in the valence shell. Now lost 1, therefore plus 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Count electrons, oxygen. Electrons for oxygen again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Lost 1, therefore plus 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So then you know again, 6 electrons valence shell. It also has 6 electrons, there is no charge coming. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4. Nitrogen, 5 electrons, but valence shell, last 1 electron. Then this is again a terminal. Terminal always H, don't forget. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Therefore, it is going to be again minus 1. So you can see when you when you look at the charges, you can see these 3 minus and 3 plus all gets cut off again in 2 of 5 is going to be a low charge. So you can change the again this this uh, places the positions and write many structures for this, more structures. These structures all together, you this kind of structures when you change the bonds. You can write uh, all together. When you when you do these uh, structures, changing the bonds and the way are the the placing to different places, the two pi bonds, you can get a structure. One last structure you can get even 
give into the middle oxygen giving two double bonds across because still it is eight electrons middle oxygen so then like that when you draw structures you will be getting total of nine structures resonance structures so question number 16 highest oxidation number among 3d and uh, oxidation number among 3d and you know it is going to be 3d elements when you take highest oxidation number is anyway come to magnetus and then most unpaired electrons in the d it is going to be even chromium is also mo most unpaired the same number of unpaired going to come for d and sorry chromium and manganese both but highest oxidation state plus seven is going to come for manganese and it's going to form acidic basic and amphoteric compounds acidic basic amphoteric compounds are formed for like you know chromium as well and vanadium chromium many compounds are there but here highest oxidation state is going to be coming for uh, going to come for manganese so then therefore answer is two next one is going to be question number 17 question number 17 the 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 amount of heat evolved when mixing equal volume of following solution together with given uh, together a uh, given below so then when your amount of heat is going to be you calculate the amount of liberated heat uh, depending on the the number of moles of water is going to be formed and uh, if the molecules when they are when they are forming the water if they are not going to be again taking the energy back again for their own dissociation then the liberation is going to be even more therefore weak acids you know they take certain amount of uh, energy back again for the breaking so then therefore liberation by forming a very stable molecule water is going to be less when you have use weak acids but interestingly for fluorine it's not going to happen like that because fluorine is don't forget here dissolution enthalpy is also involved here because it is all in the solution so many enthalpies are involved there's neutralization enthalpies and dissociation enthalpy not only that dissolution enthalpy also you can't forget in in enthalpy reaction in acid and base reactions because acid and base reactions are going to happen in so many enthalpy reactions are going to happen in in this uh, neutralization reaction so then when you consider all of them you can see uh, the sodium hydroxide uh, with uh, uh, sodium hydroxide and HI both are going to be strong strong acid and a strong base so then therefore liberation is going to be a great amount big big amount is going to be liberated because they are already ionized there is nothing more to break because they are strong both are strong partners but when you come into sulfuric and barium hydroxide don't forget barium hydroxide even though it is in the in the group two barium hydroxide is as strong as sodium hydroxide because it is the right down you know hydroxy precipitations you are going to get from the top so as you come down they are going to become very very strong bases barium hydroxide as strong as sodium hydroxide barium hydroxide gives two two ohs two oh so then therefore neutralization enthalpy is going to be given for two moles going to be produced of, uh, of from one uh, one uh, one mole two moles of water is going to be produced because because it's a reaction is going to be one molecule is going to give two OHs from barium hydroxide, two H H pluses from H2SO4. So then, therefore, more liberation of heat is going to be from uh, from barium hydroxide and sulfuric. You understand? And then, uh, then it's going to be your 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 problem is going to be not with acetic acid and sodium hydroxide because you know acetic acid is a weak acid. So then, therefore neutralization energy is going to be given when they form the water very stable molecule they are going to give about 57 kilo kilojoules per mole that's liberated energy is given out that going to be taken a certain amount of energy back again for acetic acid molecules to be to be break into give H plus ions to the solution therefore that's going to be giving the least amount of energy coming into the solution 
but if you are going to look at HFNHI, you may think HI is a strong acid, strong acid, so then therefore liberation should be more for that. Yes, but don't forget HF is going to be uh, going to act as a weak, weak acid, but fluoride is a very small ion. Then when it is going to be dissolution enthalpy, when it's going to get hydrated, that's going to liberate large amount of energy back again to the solution. So they are dissociation, they use energy, right? But they're again giving back energy to the solution because they are, they are going to have a very small fluoride ions. So then therefore, this area you have to be, this is HF, you have to be very careful. Even though it's a weak acid, liberation is going to be uh, bigger than a stronger acid, strong acid. The reason is because it is going to have uh, this uh, energy is going to be coming due to dissolution enthalpy, dissolving the F minus ions. So next one when you come, that is quite easy because you have to just be because NRT and you know how you are going to come to the density equation also. Just it is not uh, a difficult one. Uh, just you have to you have to give the uh, the the symbols only, right? P equals NRT, N equals MOM, and then you give the symbols. Then you are going to get the answer for that one. So that answer is question number eighteen. Answer is three W R K divided by L P. Uh, next one, um, the set of quantum numbers associated with the last electron of atom 3, 1, minus 1, plus half. The element is going to be that one again. Uh, principal quantum number is 3. Uh, L is going to be 1 mean, that's P orbital. Minus 1 mean, P1, it is 3, 1, minus 1. When concentration is more, pressure is also more, pulling, pushing power is also more in the gas gas molecules. So in this equilibrium, look at the look at the answer 2x and equilibrium 2p and 3q. In this one, initial pressure with x molecules is 12, 12 dissociation. You know, one dissociates according to the equation, go back to the equilibrium equation. When 2 dissociates, P is given 2P and 3Q. Then if you take X dissociates, that means from 2X side to X dissociates, then P is going to be plus 2P and uh, plus 3X because X gives, 2X gives 2P and 3Q. Therefore, it is 2X dissociates give 2X and 3X. When you get the total amount, 2X uh, minus 2X and plus 2x gets cut off then total number of moles going to be in the solution 12 plus 3x the total pressure after the decomposition is 16 then you simplify you get x is 4 divided by 3 then they are asking percentage decomposition when you come to percentage decomposition decomposition is 2x so then you go to x you know right then 2x is that into 2 
then you know the number now so the percentage is going to be initially you had the 12 atm decomposed amount you can see it is 2x x you know then multiplied by 2 then that is the 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 fraction multiplied by 100 you get the percentage then you get the 22.2 is coming as that next one the absorption frequency is similar to zinc you know absorption frequency is going to be similar it is going to give the same colors so same colors going to be zinc is no color so they absorb all the frequencies and that's going to be in the end no color so it is um, the, the sorry zinc is not absorbing any frequency they are not absorbing because there is no uh, transition is going to occur between the energy levels according to the when the split comes they are not going to transfer electrons there are no transition mean no absorption when the no absorption mean they are not going to give a color so then the color for zinc is going to be it's white color no color so other one is going to be scandium scandium 3 plus is also it is 0 d0 like zinc is going to be d10 this is going to be d0 so then therefore it is also not going to give a color so color same frequency is going to be absorbed by zinc and scandium scandium is the answer i hope you all have understood because it is the the theory is coming with why you are getting the colors and how you get the colors with with that understanding the next one is going to be uh, a polymers when you get the polymers uh, which is going to be thermo which polymer is going to be the polymer which is the rigid structure and do not change by the temperature that means it's going to be thermo thermosetic polymer so it is going to be a rigid and a very very strong structure is going to be given by link polymers so uh, that means condensation type polymers and link polymers so that's going to be Bakelite one. Bakelite is going to be giving the formaldehyde and uh, Bakelite. So urea formaldehyde, but Bakelite is in your new syllabus. So Bakelite is the answer. They are, all the others are not going to be forming the this cross link structure like that. So cross link structure is going to give this very strong structure, rigid and high temperature to break. Then the next one, the valencies of element having the configuration of NS2 and P4. NS2 and P4, you know, uh, six electrons in the outermost. So six electrons is there, seven, eight, two can be taken. Then they can remove even four electrons. They can remove all the six electrons also. So then therefore their uh, valency is going to be, answer is going to be two, two, four, six. Then next one, when you come to redox equations, children, uh, you know, when you are titrating, when you are going to get k 4 to react with uh, ferrous oxalate, ferrous oxalate is given. So k 4 is going to be a very strong oxidizing agent. It's going to reduce. So then oh, you can look at ferrous oxalate. Ferrous is going to be also can, ferrous can oxidize to ferric. At the same time, oxalate also can oxidize to carbon dioxide. So then both are going to oxidize with k 4 k 4 reduce and the other two are going to oxidize. When you have this reaction, you can see the balance. You all know how to write the balance equation. So then when you get the full balance, then you have you get, you can see uh, oxidizing one and reducing one, the number of electrons when you take, when you look at, reduce five electrons. Oxidize because two are oxidizing. You have to get the total number this time. So this is little harder in this in this one. You have to take the total. That's going to be now. Write the for both reactions. Both are going to oxidize. Number of electrons involved for the oxidation is three electrons. So to give the three and for the for, to to have the reaction at the same time, same number of electron has to be involving in the reaction you multiply cross multiply when you get the the number then you get 5 k 4 is going to react with 3 fe 3 plus when you multiply 
then you can see number of moles of K min of 4 is divided by 5 and multiplied by 3. So you get that concentration 0 0.12. Next one, uh, 20, 25, 25th one. Uh, electricity and in an electrochemical cell you know electricity is going to conduct in an electrochemical cell how fast the ions can move right so ions are going to move with the the ability for the ion to move the the because it is going to move across water so if they are going to have a very high charge then they are going to have a water wheel also produced and that water wheel is going to not going to allow the ion to move easily and then the number of electrons can be carried it's like a like a vehicle taking the electrons up and down so then therefore higher the charge they can take the the number of electrons going to be more right but the thing is if it is smaller the cation that the, even though it is a high charge then their movement is going to be restrained because of the water wheel so then therefore you have to see the charge and the size if size is bigger and charge is high so much better for the movement so then therefore you look at the ions for their conducti conductivity and conducting ability potassium nitrate is going to be moving and uh, give, having a better conduction the reason is it is easily ionizing and bigger cation and a bigger cation so then when cation is bigger then they can take the take the uh, the electrons easily from one side to the other side so then here since it is given uh, potassium nitrate is there answer is going to be the third answer others are not ionizing easily because acetic acid and them they won't ionize easily uh, then the other one is uh, sodium nitrate potassium nitrate potassium is bigger and sodium fluoride fluoride even though it is uh, the the reason is again the water wheel is not going, going to stop it moving fast because it is a small high, uh, small uh, high charge ion Next one, when you come into uh, that is uh, enthalpy question. Uh, first one is going to be formation enthalpy for HCl that is given 91 into 2 because two moles are produced. Other one is bond dissociation enthalpy for hydrogen and chlorine, which is given to you. Then they are asking bond dissociation enthalpy for HCl. So for two moles, you can calculate, then divide by two, then you can calculate for one mole. Next one, calcium nitrate and sodium nitrate, you are going to decompose. But in this decomposition, you know, sorry, calcium carbonate and sodium carbonate, you are going to decompose. Sodium carbonate is not going to decompose under Bunsen burner's temperature. Then only calcium carbonate will be decomposed. So, see the the mass loss is going to be uh, remaining mass is 0.55 gram. Then you can calculate the mass loss. Mass loss is going to be the gas given out. So gas given out, you can calculate the number of moles of gas given off by dividing by the molar mass, right? And then you know from that number of moles carbon dioxide to be given out, calcium carbonate should be there. So when you write the equation, you know one molar carbon dioxide is given by one molar calcium. Then if you know the number of moles of carbon dioxide multiplied by the molar mass of calcium carbonate, then you get the mass of calcium carbonate. That when you calculate it comes one gram. Then your sample is pure, 100% calcium carbonate. Next one. When you take this again, take the molecular formula and when, when you write the, the structure, you will be getting the structure what's there on your answer, uh, the paper, answer script. So you can see that one is going to have one chiral center. So that is going to give two optical isomers and then cis trans isomerism is also there you, when you look at the molecule you can see cis trans isomerism is also there so then two, two geometrical isomers also will be coming so then it's going to give geometrical and optical isomerism is in that molecule 
Then question number, that's the first answer. Third year, Tuan, when you come, you can see three equilibriums are given. You have to get the answer using K values. So first equilibrium, K1 expression you can write, second K2, third one, the K equilibrium, K is the equilibrium. And then first when you use K1, you can you can see the expression using K1, X you can you can get the expression and uh, and that you can substitute to your K value and then when you get that you can see K2 star is sorry squared K2 squared is going to be this uh, K expression value you can see it there K equals is it squared into m squared divided by y squared so that's going to be k2 squared so you substitute that there then you get the answer k equals k2 squared into k1 so the next molecule is going to be now your answer is going to be a b c d type answers there you need to understand what is what's there shall we see whether we can understand fast what what's in the in the molecules given uh, so, the molecule is actually, is, uh, one is a benzene, another one C double O carbonyl group and OCH3 group is there, that's a ester molecule. So in that one, label, car, label atoms are given, A, B, C, uh, C uh, label lies on the same plane, when, when you take uh, this molecule, uh, a B A B and C is going to be the C is going to be the carbon is it when you take this molecule you know they are talking about A B C atoms this one is planar this is also planar right trigonal planar but you don't forget this is tetrahedral so then there are this A B C when you are when you are getting these uh, the atoms are coming they are not going to come into the, the ABC line on the same plane not necessarily because of this one and this and this are going to be this is going to be a tetrahedral one so it is not going to be coming into the same plane it can be coming out because it's a tetrahedral going to come into a tetrahedral plane so then that is going to not going to be a, uh, the true statement uh, true regarding that then hybridization of carbon is sp2 sp2 is not everywhere sp2 here this is here this is but this one is sp3 hybridized so the carbon is not everywhere sp2 this molecule react to give a more than one product yes because it is when they react it is going to give can give because this ester can give more than one product that is true carbon atom atom has the ability to donate lone pairs uh, lone pair more than the oxygen atom no carbon is not having the ability to donate the lone pairs more than the oxygen atom oxygen is uh, here in this one carbon is is not having the lone pairs carbon is uh, oxygens are going to have the lone pairs coming into the atom so then therefore that's also not a true statement so answer is going to be only C, that's going to be fifth answer. Statement regarding true regarding spontaneous reactions. Spontaneous means reactions are happening without, uh, without pushing for the reaction all the time. So reaction must have a negative enthalpy. Uh, not always, right, because don't, don't forget spontaneity is going to depend on delta G. Delta G is a product of delta H and delta S both. So then therefore not necessarily sometimes delta S can help. Uh, so uh, changing uh, temperature can change the spontaneity of a reaction. Yes, changing temperature can change the spontaneity because T and you know T and delta S part is always connected. So enthalpy change of a reaction must be a large exothermic if entropy change is going to be negative yes entropy change is going to be negative then entropy change is going to be can make minus t delta s can make plus so then delta g to be minus spontaneous delta h has to be minus and a large 
delta H, then only delta G, will be, delta G is going to be minus. So then therefore that's a true statement. Reaction should have a less activation energy. Not always. Sometimes reactions are spontaneous even though activation energy is very high. So then that's not a criteria. So then that is the answer is going to be B and C. Uh, answer is going to be 30, 32 B and C. Then 33, uh, 33 which gives chlorine as a product, chlorine, chlorine reaction, chloride ions with sulfuric, no, you know chloride ions to oxidize to Cl2 is not easy, very difficult, so then therefore you need a very strong oxidizing agent, sulfuric can do with uh, iodide mostly and bromide but not with Cl- so then therefore it is not the correct answer, reactions chlorine Cl- ions or Cl- ions in a basic medium, that is the other way around the reaction is happening. You know Cl2 is going to give in a basic medium or Cl- and OCl- uh, reverse reaction is not possible under normal conditions. So then therefore that's not going to give in the basic medium. Reaction with chloride ions uh, KMnO4 in an acidic medium, yes. You know KMnO4 is going to be a very strong oxidizing agent and that is possible. Reaction with concrete Cl and solid potassium dichromate, yes, not according to your redox potentials. You know your redox potentials we had with the same thing with water also, right? Uh, uh, this uh, certain reactions redox potentials will not allow, uh, not the same way it is uh, the, the chlorine, chlorine coming out also with water. Can you remember that to your cells? Uh, uh, in the same way here also, even though reduced potential is not going to help here, but if you use use very high concentrated HCl and solid potassium dichromate, that can produce Cl2. So then therefore C and D are correct here. 33, the answer is going to be C and D. Next one is going to be the, the 34, 34, which of the following statement is uh, true regarding Rutherford's goal leaf experiment, that I think is A, that's answer is A and D, right. Next one is going to be which of the following statements are true regarding the uh, natural rubber, 35, 35 natural rubber. Natural rubber is a polymer of isoprene, that's correct. Isoprene is going to be connected in natural rubber, uh, uh, that is uh, additional polymer. Uh, vulcanized, vulcanized rubber form thermosetting polymers, yes, because it is sulfur sulfur links going to come between and making its thermosetting. And natural rubber has double bonds with cis uh, configuration, that's also true. Natural rubber is going to have more cis. Uh, tire, uh, tires made of natural rubber is black due to sulfur crosslinks, no, because of the carbon is adding as a filler, that's why it is going to get the color, 36 black color. So next one. Uh, in this question, A and B and placed in a vessel, evacuated vessel, that we know A and B are there. And then uh, they are going to reach the equilibrium room temperature. The boiling uh, points of uh, uh, placed in equilibrium uh, reach equilibrium at the room temperature. That means it is going to be, you know, Raoul's mixture, solid, solid liquid and solid. Sorry, solid and gaseous will be there in the phase. The boiling point of uh, point of A is going to be less than B. That being, sorry, A is going to be more than B. So then therefore B is more volatile. When B is more volatile, and they are talking about the P naught A and P naught B, and then the, uh, the pressures of P A and B, partial pressures of A and B. 
So then you have this mixture P uh, the this is the composition, right? Compositions. If you have a PO, PO, X normals, if this is going to be 0 and 1 and 1 and 0. If you take if you take the B is going to be this and A is going to be this. A is the mole fraction is high here, B mole fraction is going to be increasing this way, and this is the PO B. POB is going to give a pressure for only for pre, pre, only for B's pressure is going to be P naught B and only for A's pressure is going to be P naught A. We took it like this because because the the statement it's given one is more volatile, more volatile one is going to be B. So then more pressure will be exerted by B and then the total pressure is going to be like this, right? If it is going to be ideal situation so then then it's given few statements and uh, when you look at that you can see p naught a is first answer p a plus p b is going to be going to be greater uh, going to be smaller than p naught a plus p a plus p b is going to be less than p naught a if p naught a is smaller P A plus P B is going to be always bigger than that. So then therefore that's not a true statement. B1 is going to be P A plus P B. You can see P, P A plus P B. P B minus P naught B is going to be more than 0. But C now P naught B is going to be a bigger value. P A plus P B minus variable P A plus P B minus P naught B is going to be P naught B is a bigger value. That's not going to be a plus value. It is smaller, it's not a bigger than 0, it is smaller than 0. So then therefore that's also wrong answer. Next one is going to be P naught B is going to be more than P A. P naught B is going to be more than P A. Yes, any pressure when you take the partial pressure of A component it is going to be less than P naught B because that's the most volatile one. So the P naught B is going to be P naught P naught B is going to be more than P A is correct. That is correct because this is more volatile. And then P A plus P B P A plus P B is going to be P A plus P B variable P A plus P B is when you take it is going to be PA plus PB, PA plus PB, right? That's uh, the, this one's pressure, A's pressure, B's pressure. Well, whichever the time when you take, whichever the sample, composition sample you take, PA plus PB is going to be smaller than P naught A, P naught B, sorry, P naught B. So then therefore that's a true statement. Then you have two true statements, C and D. Okay, next one. The next one, next one is regarding electrochemical series. Uh, you know, electrochemical series is going to give you the idea how they react. Which one is going to be reduced potentials you have done, right? Reduced potentials were coming in your electrochemistry. So that series is going to give you. Which one will is going to be easily reducing, oxidizing, using, using, the, using the series. Electron gain enthalpy of chlorine is higher than fluorine. It is not going to say in the electrochemical series. So then therefore, cannot be explained. Yes, it cannot be explained. Copper 2 plus ions get reduced to copper easily. Yes, because copper 2 plus, it is, they are reduced. Ability to reduce is more. You can see looking at the series because they are quite not on the top of the series in the activity series. Uh, uh, then uh, electrochemical series you can see it is easily reducing. Uh, the reducing ability of potassium is more than that of sodium. Reducing ability means they oxidize easily. They oxidize. Potassium is going to be removing electron and oxidizing. So potassium is easy to oxidize more than sodium, yes. 
the potassium is higher in the, the series than sodium, yes that is also true and that happens also easily, you all also know uh, by studying the atoms. Copper can be oxidized by H plus ions, it is, uh, cannot be explained by because copper is going to be below hydrogen, so it is easily reducing. So copper is, copper 2 plus can easily reduce to copper, copper oxidized to 2 plus is not easy with H plus. So then therefore your answer is going to be, your answer is going to be A and D, A and D, yes. Next one is uh, the statement true regarding kinetic molecular theory equation. Kinetic molecular theory equation is also given, equation is given. So C squared bar is going to be depending on the temperature, yes kinetic energy is going to depend on the temperature, how fast they move, the like, the like vehicle in a petrol, uh, petrol in a vehicle, it's like that, right, molecules have get energy with the temperature, so they move fast and they have more kinetic energy when you have more temperature, so then therefore kinetic energy is going to have a direct connection with the temperature. Other thing is uh, the, the kinetic energy and the mass when the when the every molecule is not going to have the same speed at the same temperature why because heavy molecules move slow you know so then therefore the increasing with the temperature first statement is a correct one c squared bar change only changes the pressure mode it, 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 c squared bar is the pressure is not going to have a huge impact on that that's kinetic energy part the two uh, different gases at the same temperature going to be going to have the same c squared bar you know two different gases at the same temperature they are not going to have the same same speed moving so same temperature they are not going to move at the same speed so that is uh, that is not true they are asking the the true statement c squared by increaser uh, increases if the mo if more molecules of the same gas move two different gases so then the answer is going to be uh, answer is going to be a only five so answer is going to be five that being a only others are true statements so then next question next one that's going to be uh, 0.001 sodium sulfate solution is prepared uh, for practical. So then they are asking this, the concentration is going to be expressed using PPM value. Concentration when you calculate for 0, 0.001 sodium sulfate for PPM, you know 10 to the power 3000 is going to be, PPM is going to give in a mass. So in gram mass or milligram mass you can give. So then in thousand it is going to have 0 0.0001 moles you can convert into grams. In in the in thousand parts this many grams how much is in million parts? So you calculate. When you calculate in million parts, so you can say 142 ppm, not 42. So then therefore that's not a true statement. So then the next one is going to be uh, uh, 50 cubic centimeter solution can be used to titrate of this the sodium that being sodium sulfate can be used to titrate 25 cubic centimeters of magnesium chloride there is no magnesium sulfate is not a precipitate either so then therefore it's not a titration titration you have to be able to see the end point there is no end point coming so then therefore not, that's not a true statement anyway there is no concentration is also given for uh, given for the uh, magnesium chloride but any you can't use it because it's not going to give any any indication at the end point so that's not a true statement the sodium sulfate concentration is in ppm 142 yes you have calculated double dilution of sodium sulfate is going to give the density of this so double dilution mean 2000 cubic centimeter is going to have calculate the mass then in one cubic centimeter one cubic decimeter 
you can get the density because given in one cubic decimeter gram you get the same density so then therefore that's a true statement which of the following will give the precipitate when added to barium chloride so you know it has to give a precipitate either barium or chloride using silver is going to or lead going to give a precipitate here silver is not given therefore lead mercury silver gives precipitations so lead is here lead is there so lead chloride answer a is correct next one is going to be barium hydroxide is not it's it's a solution and uh, then uh, Next one is ammonium nitrate. So then, therefore, that's also solutions only barium nitrate and ammonium chloride. Barium sulfate is a precipitate. So then, therefore, A and B. A and B. Next one is going to be forty-one. Uh, second, next one is okay. The periodic table, second period contains most number of gaseous elements. Yes, first period all gases, but only two. When you come to the second period, you have so many gases coming. So then therefore, second period is going to be having large number of gases. Oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, neon, all of them are gases. The next side, when you come, only common, uh, only common quantum number for them is the principal quantum number no when you write the quantum numbers there are so many common quantum numbers coming spin quantum number always there can be common so then therefore it is not true so then there it is right true and false uh, third answer next one 42 nox gases produced uh, from jet engines can harm ozone layer yes of course it can harm ozone layer because it can react with ozone layer producing the NO, NO2, NO can produce NO2 and oxygen. Then um, NOx gases give free radicals, yes NO2 even with, uh, with uh, solar energy produce NO gas which is a free radical. Even NO2 gas you know it is going to have unpaired electron, NO2 is also going to have an unpaired electron when you draw the Lewis structure. So you, those ones are going giving free radicals with energy. Then uh, next one, both carbon atoms in ethane lie on the same plane. Yes, carbon to make the bond, yes it is. But carbon to carbon, tetrahedral, uh, hydrogen atoms, but carbon to carbon going to be going to come into the same plane. And next one, because they overlap and they are on the same plane. Uh, none of the hydrogen atoms are coming to the same plane with uh, carbon atoms no hydrogen atoms are carbon to hydrogen can come to the same plane right carbon to hydrogen can come to the same plane they are coming to the same plane so then therefore that is that's going to be uh, statement is going to be true and false the <coughs> third one right carbon car not some carbon some hydrogen atoms are going to come onto the same plane with carbon they are not anyway talking about both carbon they are not they are carbon right so even both carbon it can come to the same same plane some of the some of the ones because it's it is going to be tetrahedral and uh, next one is uh, not the same line same plane is different there next one is going to be plane and line you have to understand very clearly in chemistry uh, next one is uh, iodine and potassium iodide gives a yellow orange solution yes i3 minus is going to be a yellow orange solution i3 minus ions form in this solution shows 180 degree angle no it is not going to show a 180 degree angle because I2 to I minus is not going to be a covalent bond. You know it is going to be a ion induced induced dipole uh, attraction. So then there it's uh, it's not going to form a linear covalent no, li uh, states because I3 minus no problem. All of you understand I2 and I minus is going to produce I3 minus that orange brown color liquid, right? tea color orange brown color liquid and this is going to have intermolecular attraction ion induced dipole attraction ion induced dipole attraction is going to be 
not a covalent bond to look at the angle. So then therefore 180 degree angle is not going to be coming here since this is not a covalent bond. Ammonium acts as a Lewis base. Since ammonia has uh, ability to accept protons, yes, ammonia has the ability to accept protons, but ammonium ions already accepted protons and it is not a Lewis base anymore, ammonium ion. So then therefore it is a wrong statement. Lewis base accepted protons, uh, ba Lewis base, Lewis base accept protons, therefore ammonia Ammonia forms ammonium ions. Yes, Lewis bases. Ammonia is a Lewis base, accepts protons, and therefore it forms ammonium ions. Correct. First statement is wrong, second statement is a true statement. So then, therefore, the answer is 4. Next one 46. 46. Uh, alkaline earth metals react with steam to form basic oxides. Yes, you know, steam alkaline earth metals react to form their oxides and hydrogen gas. Steam, both hydrogens out. And then uh, alkaline earth metals replace hydrogen from water. Uh, alkaline earth metals replace hydrogen from water. Yes, that is why they 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 replace hydrogen from water that's why they form the oxide and uh, hydrogen gas so then therefore that's both are correct and first one explain the second one uh, second one explain the first one so then therefore it's a first answer the ionic product of water kw is very small since water is a stable covalent molecule Yes, KW is very small. Why forward reaction is so much less and equilibrium is going to come back very fast because it is a very stable molecule and very difficult, strong covalent bonds and difficult to break. And therefore, it is, uh, it is uh, not going to form a lot of H pluses in water. So it is bond strength is important, they are covalent. So that is going to be a true statement. And next one is going to be dissociation of water is endothermic process with high activation energy. That is also true. Dissociation is difficult. That is why we need very high activation energy. So then therefore reaction is not going to happen easily. That's also answer is one. Next one polystyrene is an unsaturated polymer. No polystyrene when you make actually if you look at polystyrene the polymer polymer chain is not the unsaturated part is going to come polystyrene the benzene ring don't forget it is unsaturated because benzene ring is there the polystyrene is made through condensation polymerization yes it is condensation polymerization sorry it is not condensation polymerization it is going to be addition polymerization they open up the bonds and getting added in polystyrene. It is not a condensation polymerization. So then therefore, first is uh, true, second one is going to be a false statement. Answer is going to be three, third answer. Next one, 49. Uh, next one is going to talk about electrons behave as sometimes as particles sometimes as waves electrons going to be behaving as particles and wave at the same time not sometimes simultaneously so Broglie postulated the wave nature of elements using its particle nature yes any matter Broglie is talking about the matter behaving uh, giving a wave nature so then therefore that's also true so then that is going to be first one is, is a false one, second statement is a true statement, both answer. 50 last question, uh, last one is going to be chlorine when act as a bleaching agent, it act as a reducing agent. Chlorine when act as a bleaching agent, when act as a bleaching agent, chlorine act as a bleaching agent in water, that's why you add chlorine to water even to clean uh, uh, sometimes uh, cleansing as a cleansing thing also in swimming pools and you can use it as a bleaching too. So chlorine act as a bleaching agent, uh, it, it act as a reducing agent. 
No, chlorine actually they are oxidized and reduce both. So it is actually uh, disproportionation and not only just a reducing part. So then therefore that's wrong. Bleaching action is generally an oxidation process. Yes, bleaching is going to be oxidizing the surface. Surface adding oxygen, bleaching produce HOCl, right? In chlorine reacted water, HCl and HOCl. HOCl is going to give very easily nascent oxygen, oxygen, HCl and oxygen. That oxygen is very, very reactive oxygen. So that can oxidize the surface, then it's a, it is going to oxidize. So that's a true generally oxidation process. Yes, that is true. So then therefore false and true state, statement that is for. Okay, children. Thank you for joining with BCI. And if you need any further clarifications, you can ring me. I'm Miss Deepika Net Singh here. And my telephone number you take down if you have further questions and you need to clarify certain areas, you can ring me and tell me that you are love from BCI. 076 748 4303.